These instructions are to help you install 360 tanks onto a John Deere 8030, 8000R, 8R, or 8RX model tractor. Before beginning, remove fenders, weights, and anything else from the tractor that would cause interference with the tank mounting structure. Please note that tractor weights won't be able to be reinstalled once the 360 tanks are installed. Push front mirrors to the rear of the tractor away from the hood. If any caps are in the threaded holes in the tractor frame where the rear mounting plates will attach, remove them at this time. It's recommended to run a tap in the holes to clean out rust or paint and blow out any additional debris. Unless it's otherwise noted, keep all nuts and bolts loose during the installation to allow for movement and adjustment when installing the tanks. All nuts and bolts should be tightened at the end of the installation process. Set the front weight mount bracket on top of the weight bar with the center holes aligned. Insert three large 13 inch long bolts down through the top of the bracket to keep the bracket in place on the weight bar. Using the two and three quarter inch long 5 8 bolts, flat washers and nuts, assemble each outrigger onto the front weight mount bracket. Install a flat washer on each side of the joint. If the optional lines kit is being installed, then refrain from installing the front top and bottom bolts on the left outrigger. Please note, if you're using the 360 tanks on a John Deere 8030 series tractor, the outriggers will have an offset. That offset should be positioned to the front when installing. On a John Deere 8RX series tractor, the outrigger offset should be positioned downward. Install the bottom weight bracket plate underneath the weight bar, routing the 13 inch bolts through the appropriate holes and securing with washers and lock nuts using an inch and an eighth socket and wrench. Left and right mounting plates are side specific. Ensure the side of the plate with three bolt holes are oriented towards the front. Install rear mount plates to the tractor frame with 20 millimeter bolts, lock washers, and flat washers. Use a 30 millimeter socket to slightly tighten the bolts. Please note all bolt holes on the plates may not be used. It is recommended to apply anti-seize to the bolts and holes. Please note that tractors with IVT transmissions or E23 power shift transmissions will require spacers installed behind the front side of the plate, between the plate and the tractor casting. Repeat the following steps for the other side. Using a forklift and strap, lift the rear support arm into place, aligning the holes on the support arm with the hole on the mounting plate. Start the inch and a quarter pin from the front of the tractor and insert through the mount plate and rear support. Secure with a hairpin. Repeat this on the other side. Using the 5 8 by 2 and 3 quarter inch long bolts, lock washers, washers and nuts, install the under tractor support by lifting the bottom of the rear support arms up to the under tractor support one at a time. Note that the under tractor support is adjustable to accommodate the wide variation of tractor sizes. Determine the length of the under tractor support needed for your tractor and adjust and secure the under tractor support at the corresponding setting. When the under tractor support is installed between the two rear support arms, the top of the rear support arms should be fairly parallel to the ground. Apply white thread sealing tape to the threads of all eight of the half inch 90 degree hose barbs. Then screw them into the half inch threaded tank bung fitting on the side of the tanks ensuring they are oriented towards each other. Install the clear tubes between the elbows, securing each end of the hose to the elbow with a hose clamp. It may be helpful to use a lubricant to help slide hoses onto the fittings. Make sure to insert the red float balls into the tubes before attaching the tubes to both elbows. Repeat for the front sight gauge on the second tank. When the tanks are installed, the sight gauges will be between the tank and the tractor. Repeat these steps for the sight gauges on the back of each tank.
Using a forklift and fork extension, lift the first tank off the shipping pallet. To reduce the risk of contact with the tractor, ensure the forks do not stick out past the tank. Left and right tanks can be determined by positioning the ratchets on the tank straps to the inside towards the tractor. Place the tank on the front and rear supports, ensuring holes on the tank supports are aligned with the holes on the rear support arm. If the rear support bolts don't line up, loosen the bolts that hold together the pans and support tubes under the tank to allow additional movement, but do not remove the bolts completely. Please note to situate the front of the tanks first before aligning the back. The front will sit on the outriggers. Loosely secure the three front U-bolts using the clipped washers and the 5 8 lock nylock nuts. Secure the rear of the tank to the rear support arms by loosely installing half-inch bolts, washers, and nuts through the back side. Do not tighten the nuts. Repeat for the second tank. Once both tanks have been properly aligned and loosely secured, tighten all bolts previously left loose on both sides, including the front mount brackets, the under tractor support, the rear mount plates, tank assembly front U-bolts, tank assembly rear bolts, and tank assembly pan and support bolts if you had also previously loosened those. Install the 2-inch close nipple with 6-inch extension into the bulkhead towards the rear of the tank. Screw down to tighten and ensure the port is faced to the rear. Route the two inch rubber hose, starting from the hose barb of the vent down along the support tube and through the slot between the support tube and rear mount bracket. Use zip ties to secure the vent hose at multiple locations along the rear support. Feel free to trim the hose as you see fit. Repeat for the vent assembly on the second tank. Please note that hose assemblies for the standard line, lines kit are left and right specific. Remove the threaded flange fitting from the elbow included in the hose assembly. Do this by using a 5 16 socket to loosen the flange hose clamp, but make sure to keep the seal and the hose clamp. Generously apply thread sealant on the threads of the flange and thread into the front of the tank. Reinstall the seal and reattach the flange fitting to the elbow. Install the hose assembly mounting plate to the front mount bar with a half inch by six inch long bolts, flat washers, and nuts provided. Tightened with a 3 quarter inch socket and wrench. Measure the length of the hose needed to reach the elbow previously installed on the tank. Cut the hose to length and connect the hose to the elbow and secure with the hose clamp. Repeat that process for the second tank. If you are not installing the optional lines kit from 360 Yield Center, then this is installation is considered complete. During installation of the lines kit, please note a seal should be used between every flange connection. Locate the 3 inch ball valve and remove the 4 bolts on the top side of the valve. This is the side the handle closes in the direction of. Retain the bolts for reinstallation in the next step. Install the angle valve bracket on the back side of the valve with bolts going through the bracket and then the valve. Secure with the previously removed bolts and provided flange nuts. Using a 15 16 socket and wrench, remove the top and bottom bolt on the front side of the left outrigger. Install the fill, fill valve bracket on the outside and secure with bolts.
Install the 3 inch to 2 inch flange reducer and the 2 inch barbed T fitting on the back side of the 3 inch valve. Install the seal and secure with a hose clamp. Remove the four bolts from the two inch valve. Retain the bolts for later installation. Install the 90 degree valve bracket on the back side of the valve. Secure with the previously removed bolts and provided flange nuts. Using an inch and an eighth socket and wrench, remove the center bolt from the front mount bracket beam. Install the valve bracket on top of the front mount bracket beam and secure by reinstalling the 13 inch bolt through the valve bracket and weight bar. Install the T fitting on top of the two inch valve. Insert the seal and secure with a hose clamp. Please note when sliding hoses onto hose barbs, use a lubricant as needed to help the hoses slide on easier. Cut length of hose needed to connect the left two inch shutoff valve to the T barb on the three inch fill valve. Slide one end of the hose onto the T-barb and secure with a hose clamp. Install a flange onto the other end of the hose and attach to the back of the 2-inch shutoff valve. Secure with the seal and hose clamp. Cut length of hose needed to connect the T-barb on the 3-inch fill valve to the T-barb on the 2-inch center valve. Route the hose between the two valves and secure each, each end with a hose clamp. Install the elbow on the back side of the right hand 2 inch shutoff valve with seal and hose clamp. Ensure the hose barb is directed towards the center of the tractor. Route the hose between the elbow hose barb and the front T barb on the 2 inch valve. Secure the hose at both ends with hose clamps. Install the 2 inch flange barbed fitting onto the end of the 40 foot long hose and secure with a hose clamp. Insert the seal and secure the 40 foot hose section to the 2 inch center fill valve using the hose clamp provided. Route the hose to the rear of the tractor. Use the provided zip ties to secure the hose to spots that are available on the belly of the tractor. Once the hose is secured, the installation of your 360 tanks and optional lines kit is complete.